All right, I see my big giant head. We've got music. Hi, everybody. It's Big Ed Mustafa. Welcome to Adventures After Dark. Uh, we are going to continue the adventures of Dardanissa. She's a high elf. She's a burglar. We're on the Gladden server tonight. And she is level 91 with a bullet. Uh, Wednesday night I got together with the gang and we went and did the six-man deeping wall. No, not six-man deeping wall. Six-man helms dike uh, with a couple of friends who hadn't gone through the six-man version yet. Uh, did pretty well. I think we got gold overall. And I think I might have some promotion points to spend. Not that that's a huge priority, but it's always fun. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I got 14 of them to spend. That ain't shabby. Let's see where we want to use those precious little buggers. I'm a big fan of bear traps, but I have bear traps maxed out. And trap cooldown is always a good thing to pump up. So 12 points for the next rank. If I bump that to level 3, that eats almost all of those 14 points. That is not inexpensive. But I don't know that there's a whole lot lower down that I really care about. A lot of the lower level skills are already cranked up pretty good. Except for crank, amusingly enough. But that's 9 points and that's 6, that's 15, that's 1 point more than I have. Warcraft, this is damage mitigation while you're in epic battles. Disarm contribution. Extinguish contribution. Upgrade contribution. But it's amazing that trap cooldown is so expensive. Uh, it must be pretty popular with most of the players, though. That would explain it. Trap debuff strength is also 12 points. Upgrade is 8. And I don't have Felrot armor mitigation. Protects against damage from Orcish siege weaponry. Uh, I don't know I do enough epic battles that I'm going to care that much about that. Uh, Alright, I'm all in on bear traps. We'll update the uh, cooldown. And then on the officer side... Healing's usually the first thing I max out because that's usually pretty handy. I've got 17 points to spend in this trait. Haste. Haste. Corruption removal. Target priority. Banner cooldown. Arrow volley. Armor order strength. Heal order strength could be valuable. That's an 8 pointer. That still leaves me nine points to spend elsewhere. There we go. That's not a bad way to start things off. Antler's pooping in. Hello, Antler. Welcome. So yeah, we got some good work done the other night. And it looks like I have some task items to turn in. That's never a bad thing.
Antler, Forbin Kid, can you guys hear our TV in the background? Does Mrs. M have that turned up too loud? What do you guys think? My Blue Yeti microphone's supposed to be directional and it seems to pick up everything in the whole house. Potino Bowen checking in. Okay, I'll go turn down the TV real quick. Chair stream hype, I'll be right back. That problem is solved, at least temporarily. I went out to the living room and Mrs. M had fallen asleep and she had her phone in her hand and it was blaring a YouTube video really loud and she had the TV going and the TV was loud. So I uh, turned her phone in standby and then turned the TV down. So when she wakes up, there will still be a TV going. Egarther says, when you say directional, do you mean cardoid or omnidirectional? Yetis have both settings. I have it set to cardoid, and it picks up the whole house. The Blue Yeti should have a gain adjustment. If you lower it, it should filter out background sounds. That would be good. Picks up my air conditioner pretty well, too. Um, I don't think that's going at the moment, so hopefully the sound level's good now. But it also gave me an excuse to grab some Cheez-Its and a fresh cold Coke Zero. And we're going to give a big old Lotro Stream shout out to our friend Poteen. Hopefully most of you are already following him. If not, please uh, correct that mistake. Show Poteen some love, give him a follow, like, subscribe, donate, put him in a higher tax bracket. We love to support folks who stream and support Lotro. You are the marketing department, Poteen. All right, let's get some task items turned in. I've got ornate she's, I've got ripped cloaks, I've got tattered skins. So it looks like it's going to be a Wildemore kind of rep night. Not Wildemore. Tattered skins. Weird. I'm on the right board, aren't I? Tattered skins. Yeah, you can turn them in in Wildemore. When I go to the Wildemore list, tattered skins aren't here. 
unless for some reason I already had that selected look at that I did now it's all coming together normally I cancel those out if I can't turn them in um, but task at hand reset which is always good news so I know ripped cloaks and ornate sword sheaths I think it's mostly just ripped cloaks from here on out. Why do we do our task items every day, Antler? It's because they're good and good for us. You get experience points, item experience points, war steed experience points, you get reputation points, you earn cosmetics, you earn uh, titles, and most importantly, it helps get junk out of your bags. And you can even level up by turning in task items. Am I out of ripped cloaks? I'm out of ripped cloaks. I'm at 9 of 10 for task item turn-ins. I don't think I have a single 10 stack of task items at the moment. We will abandon that quest and just double check the rest of this. Yeah, I don't have a 10 stack of anything that I see. That means it's time to go out and murder some stuff. Pont and Finberry checking in. Ginger checking in. Hello, hello. Let's see what the hobbits have for us. A heritage rune. Fantastic. I don't have any fish to put away. Looks like I have some leftover jewelry I can sell real quick. The most important, most valuable thing in all of Middle Earth is extra pack space. So, gotta sell some junk. Ring of the Glittering Caves. Gone. And these earrings are... So if I just search for Hornburg, there they are. And just like that, we've got two extra pack spaces open. It's fantastic. For my snack, I've chosen extra cheesy Cheez-Its. Potten is normally eating ice cream this kind of night, and he might share with us what kind of ice cream he's eating.
seeing his friend. Was weird. I would have expected to just be at the housing settlement. I don't know why I'm riding somewhere. That was very strange. Okay, somewhere near, I would have thought it would show up on this map. Unless this is in the way. Yeah, Fen March. We don't want to go all the way to the Fen March. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. So from here, I want to ride south. Oh, no, you don't. I was going to let him live, too. Pendax Farm. This is always a grim scene to ride through. Inquiring minds checking in. Hello. Not this time today, but I had steak with potatoes and okra earlier. You are lucky. Uh, it was our monthly flying club meeting, and Mrs. M caught wind of the fact that they were grilling out. So she wanted to go to the meeting more than I did. But we had uh, burgers and dogs cooked on the grill. Had potato and macaroni salad, chips, and our friends the Weekses. Sharon made a... Actually, she made several of them. It was some kind of uh, cake with uh, whipped topping and uh, toffee pieces. It was quite good. And Mrs. M ate way too much. I fed her a couple of plates and then walked away and she got other people to start bringing her food. I knew she had extra dessert, but then when I was getting her out of the car, it was pretty funny. I'd gotten her a bag of Doritos to eat with her burger and dog, and she ate the whole bag of Doritos. And then when I pulled her up out of the car, she wears a, a thing called a gate belt. Uh, it's basically like building a handle into your wife so she's easier to pick up. And I went to help her out of the car, and I reached in to grab the gate belt that's around her upper abdomen. And as I stick my fingers in between the gate belt and her shirt, I can feel crumbs of Lay's potato chips, and they start falling out the bottom of the belt. And I'm like, did you get a bag of chips after I already gave you Doritos? Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. She just automatically eats all the worst stuff she's not supposed to be eating.
And we also want to shout out our friend Inquiring Minds. If you are not following, subscribing, liking, or donating to Inquiring Minds, you should be able to soon. I know Inquiring Minds just recently qualified for affiliate. I don't even know if she's filled out the paperwork yet. But when she does, make sure that you are generous to her. And uh, it's a good thing. Glad to have another quality Lotro streamer in the family. Letting the world know that uh, Lord of the Rings Online is alive and well. I'm all set and got an emote approved too. That's awesome news. Hopefully the Lotro community can get you and Poteen both into higher tax brackets for next year. Well, they don't give you a lot of room to work with the details, so it can be a challenge getting your emotes to come out looking the way you want. Since Mrs. M was in the printing business for so long, I had the ability to uh, utilize one of her friends who is a graphic artist by profession. So, <laughs> Pam, make me some icons, and she did a great job with mine. I've been very happy with them. Here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. I failed to burgle. I think the alternate to cooking with gas was cooking with coal. So that's why that's an expression. Although cooking with coal is uh, considered high end in the pizza world. Burning the supplies. We will burn the supplies. I failed to burgle. I'm 
Cooking with Balrogs. Also a good plan. Stealth, that was weird. I burgled. A calibrant salve, the most useless thing I could have burgled. But I'll take it. You had a damage over time on you, which took you out of stealth. I figured it was something like that. Poison or a bleed. It happens. And Zinger, how the heck are you? And hello, Egarther. And hello, Tower. So that's a pretty good food topic to kick things off tonight. What is your favorite way to grill food? Gas, charcoal, wood fire? If you're throwing some shrimp on the barbie like uh, Bacchus down in Australia, or if you're, uh, you know, just throwing some burgers and dogs on this 4th of July, how do you like to grill? I am a charcoal briquette man myself. Pit boss smoker, very nice. Antler says gas is easier for me. Pellet. I'm disappointed about the Warship Star Trek event. Yeah, I haven't even looked at it. That was my bad. Margon says, looking good, big fella. Hope all is well. All is well. Work's going good. We're getting prepped up for a big network cutover, but I think we're doing a pretty good job of getting stuff lined up for that. And once that's done, hopefully things will start to relax a little bit at work. We've been really busy the last few months. Um, but I've got uh, 10 guys flying in from all over the country in a week and a half to help us uh, cut over a 12-story building plus parking garage, maintenance garage, and nine security pedestals over from Cisco 7000 series to Cisco 9000 series enterprise switches. It's been months of getting new single mode fiber run throughout the building and 
adding additional wireless access points throughout the building and getting new cabling for the wireless access points and uh, on and on and on okay I had already gone over there where he's at so there must be a route up yeah there it is But Wednesday, the weather here was absolutely terrific. I was a little bit late starting the stream Wednesday night because I went out to the flying field. And I got three good long flights in on my uh, um, Hobby Zone Carbon Cub. And then Mrs. M wanted Chinese food, so we stopped to get Chinese food and she ate very slowly. So we were a little bit late getting home. I was about a half hour late starting the stream. But we had a good stream. Uh, like I said, we went and did some epic battle stuff and got a chance to get uh, a couple of folks through uh, Helm's Dyke Six Man. And we went out to the flying field tonight and. I didn't take a plane, we just went to eat and hang out and attend the meeting. I've already killed my orc, so if this other player wants to run ahead of me, I'm totally fine with that. There we go. Oh, nice. Have you with the Rohirrim? Quests of the Eastfold complete. The Rohirrim have need of your services. Travel to Beacon Watch. All right. Lucky Punch the Indomitable is going to stay here and keep whacking orcs. I myself will go ahead and pop out of here. And for some reason, I had it in the back of my head. There's actually a way to climb on out of here. Yeah, there it is. So you don't end up having to stay and fight all of the orcs a second time. And... I have been to Beacon Watch to grab the Stable Master, so... Getting back there shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Oh, Inquiring Minds is having barbecued ribs. Awesome. Margon says, if security is such a big deal now, I can't imagine the technical best most companies are running under. Best equals debt. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what we spent on those 63 new switches. It was a staggering amount of money. But the switches in the building are original from when it was built back in 2011, 2012. So yeah, they needed to be replaced. They've long since been end of life. And Beacon Watch is basically southeast of here, so. This is real interesting here. We've got what looks like an abandoned farm. Overrun with squirrels. There's squirrels everywhere. They're adorable. Look at how cute these squirrels are. 
I don't know, I've ever seen this before. I just tripped across it by happenstance. I always love these crazy little Easter eggs they're throwing in. The Squirrel Palace just out in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness of Western Rohan. band down Did you ever find Goldilocks and the three bears yeah that's actually uh, near here also I always like to visit that house when I'm in the area in fact we'll probably be tripping across that at some point tonight You get vectored right past it doing some of the quests here in Beacon Watch, so. can watch. What brings you to these lands? The Rohirrim have need of your services. We're going to go talk to the Thane. The Vorpal Bunny Cave is always a good one, too. Always loved Monty Python. And then like in Wildemore, I think one of the developers put a bunny rabbit sitting on top of a bearskin rug in like three or four different places. You to these lands? Will you Just for giggles. Oh, session play. Here we go. I think the key to getting to actually get out and go flying 
is to get planes that are so small I can actually fit them in the car along with my wife. Merigith, daughter of the Thane of Fenmarsh, retells the story of King Folker the Hunter and the Boar of Everhold. Not a knock against Mrs. M, mind you, but when she goes with me, I have a Subaru Impreza hatchback, which has been a great car, really happy with it. But if I put my wife and her wheelchair and her walker in it, I don't really have a lot of room for much else. Um, and that's okay, but it's nice to be able to... Uh, pack up my airplane stuff and not have to worry about crushing it with the wheelchair or stuff like that. What's funny is like when we stopped for Chinese food the other night I pack her wheelchair and her walker away in the car, get her seated in the front seat, and then the airplane goes on top. So when we stop to get food, I have to unload the airplane, get her walker out, get her wheelchair out, and then once she's unloaded, I put the airplane back in the car. The Anvil of Winter Stith Raid. Bring home the bacon tonight. That'd be a lot of bacon. Alright, the Legend of Folka complete. Well, I almost bought bacon, but I took it off of my shopping list. But I bought everything I need to make pork adobo. So I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. I told Mrs. M she should plan on staying in. One of the things that we're struggling with a little bit is... I work all week and I'm running around doing stuff and running errands and bringing her lunch and I get exhausted and I just want to come home and relax and she has the opposite problem. Um, if it's not a dialysis day, she wakes up, moves to the couch uh, or gets up off of the couch into her chair and she sits and watches TV for eight, nine, ten hours. And then when I get home, she's like just chomping at the bit to go do something, get out of the house, go out to eat. And I'm just like, uh, I totally don't want to do any of that. So. The There's actually such a thing as adult daycare. And I might have to look into that as an option, particularly on days when she doesn't have physical therapy and even dialysis or kind of socializing opportunities for her. She gets to go out and talk to folks and, and get out of the house, even if it's not for something fun, like dialysis is no, no picnic. But there's, you know, there's aspects to that that she still gets to enjoy. Um... So who am I talking to? Oh, this dude just came hobbling up while I was wondering who I was supposed to go to next. You to these lands. Our mission is dire. Our success depends upon our strength. Will you talk to us? the Thane? 
So I've got to find a good balance. The problem with taking her to adult daycare is it's just something extra I have to add to my list. So not sure how well that would work out for us. Must turn to the offensive. Singer says adult daycare. Isn't that just Twitch? Yeah, pretty much. The Tragically Hip is also in the game. He's a bard, Garthabir, the fortress keeper, a balding, hat-wearing minstrel. Interesting. Hi, Geek's Tour. Fight Club and Minas Tirith Midsummer. Nice. Do you have visiting angels in your area? Yeah, we probably do. Antler, you got something smart alecky to say. I know about where you live. I'll just bring her by for you to watch. Will you aid the horse lords? The Rohirrim have need of your services. What business have you with the Rohirrim? Collapse some cave entrances. We'll ride the goat. Except I'm not moved in yet. That's okay. I don't mind. I'll be like, good news, honey. You're going to go hang out with Antler today, and he's got a pool at the motel where he's staying. I'll just tell her that, even if it's not true, and then she'd take it out on you. So the Three Bears house is somewhere out here in this forest. And as I'm riding to the cave entrances, I may trip across it. It is in the area. Lousy bankers. Oh man, buying a house is her forever project. Mrs. M can supervise the move exactly. Acquiring Mind says, if I lived nearby, I would be happy to come hang out. Or vice versa. My wife is a delight and a joy to be around unless you were unfortunate enough to put a wedding ring on her finger. And that she just seems to be mad about. Okay, so we got a mature hill bear, a wood bear cub, and a hostile hill bear. So there's the three bears. And then we walk in the house. We've got three bowls of porridge. We've got three beds, and there's a blonde girl sleeping in the one that's just right. And you can't wake her up. So this is the Goldilocks and the Three Bears uh, Easter egg that's out here near Beacon Watch. Ah, another Easter egg. Inquiring Mind says, oh, that's the wives code. We're born to make our husband's lives hell. I'll leave it to the imagination. She actually typed well. I know what she meant, though. Torturing me is Mrs. M's favorite pastime. And she's good at it, so... Nice cave entrance.
Don't starve to death inside your cave, stupid orcs. I might need to go the other way. Spock played the Vulcan harp. Geekstore says someone needs to do a tour of all of these Easter eggs. I nominate Ponton. I once threatened to go find all of the uh, Floyd and DeWitts uh, in one stream one night, and Zinger immediately quit playing with me. <laughs> so he knew who would be leading me around. He's like, nope, ain't going to do it. You're on your own. I think we all know what's about to happen here. Fishing or peeing in the lake, one of the two. I don't have to choose, I can do both. Colbert the Mad in the North Downs is after Stephen Colbert, who said bears are a threat, and in Lotro the Mad briefly talks about bears. Sayos checking in again, hello. I'm doing good. Antler says, fish, Ed, fish. How far does Bingo Boffin go? I've not finished that side quest off. I think it's eternal. So here's a pro fishing tip for you. If you like to drink while you're fishing, what you want to do is get some plastic wiffle ball bats and cut both of the ends off of them so you've got a long, hollow, straight tube. And you use those to pee off of the side of the boat. What ends up happening is scores of fishermen drown every year because they go to pee off the side of the boat and they lean over too far and get dumped out of the boat while they're trying to go to the bathroom. And instead, you use the uh, hollow part of the wiffle ball bat to extend out the side of the boat so you don't have to lean over to whiz. I can't say I've never drank while I was fishing, but I normally fish sober, like 99% of the time. I was out fishing a farm pond down in Odo County, Nebraska one time and a buddy of mine and I get out and it's sunrise and it's absolutely beautiful. The sun's just coming up in the east and uh, the lake is completely calm and there's water birds flying around and we're just getting our, our rods uh, rigged up and ready to cast and all of a sudden I hear 
And my buddies handed me a Coors Light at 6 in the morning, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Bingo Boffin ends at level 93. You end up back at his house in the end with a party. Very nice. I have a horrible confession to make. I've never done Bingo Boffin. What's wrong with you? Coors Light? Wasn't my pick. I didn't even know he brought beer. Oh, I have more than one of those? Oh, I have a bunch of those. Alright, what else do I only have one of? I'm doing the Bingo Boffin quest to the end. Epic Games TV says, You're fired. 6 a.m. is fine, but the choice of beer, not so much. I've done the Fins and Skins game. Get up, fish for a couple hours, then hit the golf course in the afternoon. The drinking usually happened during the golf. See, Geeks, for that's my idea of a perfect Sunday. And I told somebody that, and they were like, you must be single, and I was at the time. Owen32 checking in. Hello, Owen. Uh, my flavor preferences, E. Garther, generally tend towards Dutch or German beers. I like Beck. I like St. Pauli Girl. Uh, my standard go-to is Heineken. Uh, there's another Dutch beer, Grolsch, that's not that popular in the States that I really like. Uh, and I haven't seen a Grolsch Amber Ale in ages, but that's so yummy it hurts me to think about. Um, what's weird is I like Amstel Light, and I like Heineken Light, and there's something about Stella Artois. I might have just had a bad Stella Artois, but I drank a Stella Artois, and I'm like, who the hell thinks this is good beer? So if you're a stellar, uh, Stella Artois fan, then I'm I'm missing something. For that beer to be popular is like Chick-fil-A being popular. I don't get that either. All good beers. Carlsberg was a go-to of mine for many years. I do like a lot of the Canadian brews. Uh, Molson, um, Moosehead. Moosehead tends to be pretty skunky by the time it gets to Nebraska. Um, in fact, uh, Molson used to have an ice beer they were selling back in the 90s, and I always liked that. In the Iron Hills inside Jarnfarst, uh, right of Nain's Throne. There's a crack in the wall where you find a literal basket of Easter eggs. Potten's going through the whole list with us tonight. I like Fat Tire and Anchor. Uh, Fat Tire is yummy. Um, I've never done home brewing. It was funny about it. When I was in high school, my buddies and I were always trying to get our hands on beer, and I don't know why we never tried home brewing. It would have been a good good idea. wasn't a thing like that back in the day. Uh, Boulevard wheat is very refreshing, particularly in this kind of weather when it's hot and humid out. Um, 
Molson Ice, Labatt Ice, both popular back in the day. Keith's Pale Ale uh, from the Maritimes, yeah. Uh, there's even uh, yeah, Mexican beers that I like. Dos Equis is very drinkable, and I, I don't think it's considered a particularly premium brand, but uh, Tecate, uh, I like Tecate pretty well, too. I haven't tried a lot of the other Mexican beers. Um, Corona is very hoppy and kind of bitter, and it reminds me a little bit of an American beer called Rolling Rock. Uh, I don't hate it, but it probably wouldn't be my go-to choice. All right, my bags are full. So we are going to switch back to swords. How about the champagne of beers? Interestingly enough, um, my dad was a Budweiser guy, and my uncle Roger was a Miller drinker. And the only Miller product I'd tried for a long time was light beer by Miller, and I didn't like it. Still don't like it. Never liked it. I mean, if I'm at a party and that's what the keg was, it's like, okay, I can drink it wouldn't be my preference. It's kind of the Pizza Hut of, of beer. Um, you know, if I can drink all I want for three bucks or it's free, then okay. Um, but uh, later on, I tried... Uh, Miller had a few different different products, but the, the regular champagne of beers, Miller High Life, I actually thought it was pretty good and drinkable. I was surprised it was so much better than light beer from Miller. And they had another Miller Ice, Miller something. I couldn't even tell you what it was, but I, they had some other drinkable beers. And I didn't know why light beer from Miller was so popular and so not particularly yummy. Um... Rolling Rock was LeBlatt's. I don't know who owns it now. What about Filipino like San Miguel? Never tried San Miguel. I uh, haven't drunk a lot of the... I think I probably had a Sing Tao once. I don't know I've ever had a Sapporo. Um, uh, European and Canadian beers I uh, tended to stick with. And I like dark beer, but Guinness never sat well with me. I drink a Guinness once in a while. I like Harp, but Guinness is just that's a that's a sipping beer. And I don't mind a glass of Guinness, but two glasses of Guinness is a lot of Guinness. Red Horse is another Filipino beer. Oh, there's one beer that we get sometimes when traveling to the States. We could get 12 for about $2. It was horrible, called Schaefer. Uh, I've actually had Schaefer, and the one time I drank it, um, I had been helping with a presidential primary campaign uh, back when I was in college. I was a poli-sci major, and I didn't even particularly believe in the candidate as much as I just had the opportunity to work grassroots at his local office. And I was like, okay, this will be a good experience. So I went and worked on the Michael Dukakis campaign to age myself a little bit. And I was going to Creighton at the time. And the problem I had was uh, I was also working a telemarketing job while I was going to school. So I would basically go do my telemarketing job, and then when I had free time, I'd basically go do what I do regularly, only for free, at the campaign office. And I worked through the primaries, and the candidate happened to win the Iowa caucus, or did very well, and everybody was really happy, and they threw a party for us. And we got Schaefer beer. Um, but I'd been on the phones all day, and grinding away at the at the campaign office and I was hot and I was tired and I was thirsty and the Schaefer beer was cold so I drank it and I enjoyed it for that simple reason I was thirsty and the beer was cold so can't complain about Schaefer uh, there's a, a, a 
carling product that we would get here in the States. And by we, I mean other people, not me. But Carling's Black Label was a bargain basement beer that I think you could get a case of it for six or eight bucks. And if people used to buy it, and I was like, oh my God, how can you drink that swill? Uh, there are some other good American beers I've had. Um, I once, uh, Microsoft flew me out to Redmond, Washington one time to participate in a value-added reseller roundtable. They had a product called Microsoft Back Office Small Business Server, and I seem to be the only person in the entire Minneapolis district that was able to sell this to people. And so the Minneapolis district of Microsoft, they were like, hey, there's this guy in Omaha who can seem to sell this. We should probably pick his brain. So they flew me out to Microsoft, and uh, they put a few of us up for uh, a long weekend. I think it was, well, it wasn't a long weekend, but it was like a Tuesday through Friday, or a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, flying back Friday. And so I flew out to Washington. They put me up in a hotel. We'd go to the Microsoft uh, campus and sit in a conference room and talk about back office small business server. And then I, we did a bunch of different things. And, like, they gave us $50 credit in the Microsoft store. And I picked Mrs. M up a, a Microsoft logo Columbia jacket. And I got uh, my copy of uh, Age of Empires II. Uh, has the not for resale sticker still on it and uh, I think I got Microsoft Project and uh, one or two other things while we were out there um, and they took us on a dinner cruise on a boat through Puget Sound they sailed us past Bill's house and there was a dinner buffet on the boat it was all very nice and, and I had a great time on the trip and uh, they had Red Hook beer on the dinner cruise and I remember liking the Red Hook but when you're from Nebraska and you're in Seattle on a boat in Puget Sound, uh, eating a dinner buffet and drinking Red Hook, you're bound to like Red Hook beer. So I don't think that's one I can buy locally. But what are some of the other German beers? Um, I think I mentioned Beck and St. Pauli. Uh, I think I have a character named Warsteiner after the beer. Your aid is welcome, friend. The Rohirrim are grateful. Travel to the Boar Tribe Orc Lair. Thought I just collapsed the entrances. Why am I traveling there? The back of the boar. Oh, breaking the back of the boar. Need to find a vendor first. I think they're over here along with the Thane's wife, if I recall. Uh, I know it's considered horrible by Australians, but uh, I've never minded Foster's. Um, I can drink Foster's lager. Um, I don't know, I've had a lot of other Australian beers. And I know they sell the Foster's Special Bitters, and I've never tried that. Or Stinnick on your free-to-play. All of my accounts are free-to-play, Antler. Uh, Vajrayana says hello. Hello, Vajrayana. Schaefer, the one beer to have when you're having more than one. <laughs> That's, yeah. Harp is good. Used to drink a lot of Guinness. Yeah, is is you know there's an Irish pub down in the old market uh, called the Dubliner, and uh, black and tans are always the thing to get there. Black Label, I've had that; it's pretty bad. But one of those beers that one person would bring to a party, and because no one would steal his beers at the party, <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely true. An Erebor at the Scholar's Abode. There's an NPC named Roy who's a tribute to a Lotro player whose real name is Roy and had helped SSG with the Dwarven language for the game. Reg9K says Cronenberg. Geekstore says, I can drink Foster's. I thought you were going to say Schooner. Uh, 
Zeo says, my stomach can't handle beer, so the best I can do is combine Miller Lite with lemonade mixed in. Around here, a lot of people like to drink red beers, which is just beer and tomato juice. I, I don't get it. Although, in all fairness, I don't know I've ever drank a red beer. Just never appealed to me. Which is odd, because I like tomato juice. I just don't really feel compelled to mix it with my beer. Hail, friend. May I have a moment of your time? Welcome. Stay a moment and speak with me. Yeah, and I, I don't drink hardly at all anymore. I never had a an incident or a problem or anything. I've never had a DUI. Well, I probably should have back when I was much younger. The amount of binge drinking I, my idiot friends and I did back in our late teens and our 20s was pretty stupid. Um, but I just, you know, I got tired of spending extra money to feel bad the next day. It was like, yeah. To equip themselves well. My problem is I'm relatively happy and well-adjusted, so I don't really feel the need to drink all that much. Um, although, I mean, I liked beer and wine, and I always enjoyed Saint or uh, New Year's Eve because it was a good excuse to bust out some champagne. Never had any of the really fancy champagnes either. Uh, Moet and Shandon, uh, Imperial Brute, or White Star, I think that's about as expensive as I've probably had. Um... I wouldn't mind trying a bottle of Dom Perignon or Cristal sometime, but uh, the wife doesn't drink, so if we have something to celebrate, we don't do it with alcohol. Actually, she'd probably be more for celebrating with chicken wings than alcohol. And I don't really feel compelled to drink anymore either. I think the last time I had two Heinekens last January or February, my contractor, Victor, his boss, Jim, was in town. And we went out to meet him after work, and rather than have him drink alone, I think I actually had two Heinekens that night. It was probably the first time in over a year I had drank. Matter of fact, it was February the previous year, because I was on a, that uh, trip down in Dallas, and my boss and my boss's boss were both looking at me like, what's wrong with Ed? He's not drinking. That's suspicious. Maybe he's going to report us all to HR, and I finally had a couple of beers with those guys just so they'd, like, not think I was weird. Even at my age, I still cave into peer pressure occasionally. But when we go out to the bar, like, we went and watched uh, some of the NBA finals one night, and I was just drinking Diet Coke. And if any of my buddies flip me crap, I'm like, what do you mean I'm a Nancy boy for not drinking? Beer is all natural. It's just water and barley and hops. I'm chugging chemicals. You guys need to man up and drink some diet soda. That usually shuts them down. All right, we got rid of some more of that spare jewelry we don't need. Mossy branches. What if they can do a little foggy mountain breakdown for us? All right, I think that's about as cleaned up as the inventory needs to be for right now. Oh no, I've got overflow. Do you have need of our assistance? Yes, I need you to buy some overflow junk. Let's see what we've got. That can go. There we go. Keep those task items coming. And I actually got a recipe I need. Westament sword.
Yeah, I'll just sell those scrolls off. I mean, that's an example of where I'd rather have the pack space. Okay. Is your carry-all all, all working out well? Uh, my carry-all is on one of my alt characters. Always drink with your bosses, otherwise you're dead. Exactly, Antler. Geekstore says, I quit alcohol. I miss some of the craft beers. I don't miss the generics. I miss some of the good wines and ports, but hey, it is what it is. Yeah. And at the end of the day... I mean, with the price of alcohol being what it is, I mean, we used to laugh about having to pay six bucks for a beer at the ballpark, and now it's more like $16. It's crazy how stupid expensive that stuff all is. You know, you go, oh, would you like a glass of wine with your dinner for $12? It's like, what? No. Nobody wants to spend $12 for a three-ounce glass of wine. That's stupid. We've done it. We've completed our 10th daily task item turn in. All right, let's go figure out where these orcs are. We will ruin their day. Not sure if Easter egg reference to anything, but it's there. Map of the North Downs to the South. For some reason, there's a dancing hobbit with a squirrel running around him in a place uh, you're not meant to go. I was reading Ponton's text, so I ran myself into the wall. There we go. I actually do know how to ride a war steed, kind of. And we'll disguise ourselves as an orc. And hopefully I can ride out unmolested. Maybe if I set the right quest focus, that would help. I'm not a smart man. Uh-oh. And I can't get up here. All right, well, let's see where this goes. It's the worst that can happen. I die horribly. Happens to me all the time. A large beard at NHL game here is close to twenty dollars. Yeah, but that's Canadian dollars, so it's only like eight bucks in US currency. Oh, come on. Get me up out of this water. Oh, and I can't swim through these reeds. And it's all cliff. Zeo says it probably makes a big difference if you have money to burn or if you need to count your them out and make your ch tough choices. That's true. Just out of curiosity, since topic of drinks, looked it up, the most expensive wine sold in 
this looks interesting. Looks like we have a couple of guards here. It's like, okay. We've got more people hanging out here. I don't recognize this. I must have just switched. Oh, I'm in Farinorian, Beacon Hills already. Huh. Yeah, I didn't want to be in Farinorian yet. That's the portal to Gondor. Not just Gondor, Farinorian is pretty far out, if I recall. It's not exactly West Gondor. Ponton causes a rain of waffles. Thank you, Ponton. Yeah, and... Uh, boy, one of the interesting things about that, Zeo, is... Uh, As, as my career has advanced and I've gotten more set financially, I find myself doing more and more frugal things. I guess I appreciate the work that it takes to earn the money more. Um, so like cutting out the alcohol. Um, I've been buying a lot of my shirts from Walmart. I've been getting new polo shirts to replace some old thread-worn stuff. That I really ought to throw out. I have some old uh, Bass Pro Shops polo shirts that I've worn for years and years and they've just gotten so frayed around the collar that it's like yeah I need to throw these out. Um, but I, I don't buy high-end clothes anymore. I don't spend a lot of money on, on alcohol and I I can afford to. I mean, I can afford to do a lot of things that I probably couldn't have afforded to do back in the day. But, um, like with Mrs. M, a couple of weeks ago she wanted to go out to dinner and she's like, I want Japanese food. And it was like a Monday night and we dropped 80 bucks on dinner just grabbing a bite to eat on a Monday night. And I was like, this is stupid. Um, you know, it wasn't that I couldn't afford to do it, but I know the value of a buck. And just kind of made me mad that we dropped so much money on a random Monday night. So earlier this week, she was like, I want to go out. And I was like, okay, well, it's Monday. There's a local uh, fast food chain called Amigos. And on Mondays, they have three hard shell tacos for three bucks. So I said, if you want to go out, either we stay home and I cook, because we have plenty of groceries, or we can go to Amigos. And she's like, all right, we'll go to Amigos. So we, we dropped $12 on dinner. I got us nine tacos. I had five. She had four. They're not big tacos. And then um, I spent $2 getting us six donut holes because she wanted dessert. And then the next night, we went through the same thing. She's like, I want to go out. I'm like, or she didn't want me to cook is the main thing. And I think it isn't, I'm a good cook, but the problem with me cooking is it means we're staying in. And this, I, I was talking earlier about how my wife gets frustrated because she's cooped up at home all the day while I'm at work and running errands and doing a bunch of other stuff. And she wants to get out and do stuff and not be stuck at home. And so she didn't want to eat my cooking, which is fine. But I said, okay, well, if you don't want me to cook, then uh, we can grab some Little Caesars. And I spent $12 on uh, extra most best pepperoni pizza and some Crazy Puffs. And again, I mean... Not a big deal if we want to go out and drop 40 or 50 bucks on a dinner, but I was making the point that we're not going to do that all the time every night. And I, I actually enjoy cooking, and I usually go out to eat every day for lunch. I'm kind of tired of restaurant food, to be honest. I'm looking forward to cooking some pork adobo tomorrow. I don't want to go out to a restaurant. I don't want to get food delivered. I'd rather just cook what I have on hand. I'm a good cook. Mrs. M's problem is if we eat at home, she doesn't get to get out. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of stuff planned for this weekend, and she'll get out plenty, and 
I need time to chillax and get laundry done and clean up the house and I can't be driving her from restaurant to restaurant all the time which is what she'd like but the danger is going to be when we finally get her two discover cards paid off and she literally has no debt then because she's always like, do I have money to buy this? Do I have money for us to go here? <laughs> and I always kind of check out, like, yeah, you have money. So when she doesn't have any more bills to pay, she's going to have plenty of money and we'll probably be getting dragged around to every restaurant in town. Not the worst problem to have. I think I get to kill a bunch of orcs. Ooh, another discovery deed complete. Eastfold exploration. Corbin kid can't resist any longer. Got to go raid the fridge. Fridge. Ginger's off to bed. Have fun all. Thank you, Ginger. Geekster says he's fairly similar. Just can't justify spending a bunch of money on golf shirts or t-shirts. Theo said my situation's the opposite. I get SSDI, so every month I have to decide what I want. Comes down to do I want takeout or a game on Steam. So every month is an exercise and what I want after all the bills and needs are taken care of. Let me say it's not fun. I believe me, I've been there. I, I definitely remember what that's like and now that I'm better situated financially, I have an appreciation for what you're going through and I don't want to take for granted not having to go through that regularly. One of the things I tell my niece and nephew is if you Act like you have money when you're broke, you will always be broke. But if you act like you're broke when you have money, you'll probably always have money. And making the smart, tough choices that you're making now, if your income increases, if you have more resources to draw from, you'll want to continue to use those same skills to make smart choices because there's always more things to spend money on than there is money to spend. You know, you hear about people being broke at a higher level or somebody making $250,000 a year that's still living paycheck to paycheck because they can't manage a budget. They don't make smart choices with their money. You know, Nicolas Cage bought houses and properties until he went bankrupt. Now he's got to make every bad movie he ever gets a script offered from. Ooh, I burgled a lesser valorous necklace of power. Geekstore says, I tend to spend money on my hobbies nowadays instead of going out for food or beer. Antler says, I know the feeling as well as trying to try living in a hotel for two months. Yeah, it's not a fun situation, Antler. I'm glad you guys are going to get resettled again soon. That tornado was not a good deal for you. Um...
Yeah, I attacked him by accident. Cleansing the cave. Okay, so I need to find the head orc and murder him. I think we can do that fairly quickly. Is there any point in murdering these orcs? Eh, no. Not really. I'll have more orcs to kill later. I do appreciate that gaming can be downloadable now. Back when games were still CDs in the 2000s, must have bought Final Fantasy X four times. Either I lost it or destroyed it by being careless. Now if I want to replay a game, I can just download it if I bought it. Yeah, it's nice to have it available in your Steam library. It makes changing out computers easy, or if you lose a hard drive, you don't have to sweat it. Sauron grows impatient with you, Orc. Our plan is in motion. The people of Eastfold fear us. Fear is not enough. They need to be defeated. We will not fail, Sauron. He did not make it. I corrected the great boar's skull. And now we ride for beacon watch and for glory. Well, and I, I think one of the things that we're all pretty enthusiastic about is gaming is very high-value entertainment. I mean, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, you know, if you're a PC gamer, you, you, you can build a pretty damn nice PC for five or six hundred bucks. I mean, monitor, keyboard, mouse included, headset. Um... If, you, if you're a console gamer, I mean, you can get into an Xbox Series S for $249. And that's a lot of machine for $250. Um, I think Steam Decks are on sale right now for cheaper than Nintendo Switches. Um, Steam's got a summer sale going on. So depending on what platform you want to game on, you've got a lot of good choices and I'm not saying five or six hundred bucks not a lot of money. It is. But it will last you for years and years and years. And people kind of make fun of me all the time because a lot of the stuff that I play, Apex Legends, World of Warships, Lord of the Rings Online, EVE Online, um, you know, even Fallout 76 you were able to pick up for free at several points. Um, you don't have to pay for games necessarily. And, you know, the, the potential for you to, to spend money on microtransactions is enough for them to, you know, give the game away for free. 
no, I want to go, well, I guess I can do this while I'm out here. Sharpening stones. Um, I don't know that if you if you console game you've got the same opportunity for lots of free games. But I know there are free titles on Xbox. <coughs> I just haven't console gamed for a long time. Not that I didn't enjoy console gaming when I did it, but when I got married, Mrs. M basically took over the TV. I hardly ever use the TV in the living room because she's always watching it. Um, so if I got a gaming console, I would either hook it up to my PC monitor and use it here instead of the PC, or I would uh, not get to play it because uh, we only have one TV in the apartment. Uh, which is by design. She gets mad because I won't allow any video device in the bedroom. The bedroom is for sleeping, not for watching videos. And the reason is she likes to sleep with the TV on. And I couldn't do that. It would wake me up constantly. So, because I need my sleep, I don't let her watch videos in the bedroom. Not on a TV, not on her tablet, not on her phone. So... Um, yeah, I just I, I haven't console games since I got married. The consoles all got packed up and put out in the garage, and they've kind of sat there for quite a few years. Greetings, friend of the Rohirrim. Hail, friend. May I have a moment of your time? Greetings, friend of the Rohirrim. I think I can approach it from the other side. I need to go up into the beacon, or into the tower. Games have come a long way from the 80s. Yep. Plus the thing is, we all have something that we are into as a hobby. It's different for everyone. Well, we may as well go vendor before we go talk to the Thane, because I can run into his wife, get those quests turned in, because she's right by the vendors. I think I took a wrong turn. The town is cut in half? No, I just went the wrong way. I'm an idiot. There we go. Hello, friend healer. I need you to buy some junk. To be traveled lightly. Bacchus checking in. Hi, Bacchus. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I had a very good day. Thank you. Now Bacchus here, he spends most of his money on booze and women, but the rest of it he wastes. Bacchus says, I do enjoy Rohan. It's a very pretty part of the game. Oh, the music's fantastic too. Let's give Chance Thomas his due. Although he only did Eastern Rohan. I don't think he did the music for Western Rohan. It's also quite good though. It's also very cool that all of the Lotro soundtrack is been released on the Lotro channel on YouTube and it's available to play on YouTube for no charge which is very cool Bacchus says I dropped fifty five dollars on a pretend spaceship the other day I'm embarrassed about that 
We forgot about the part about how it wasn't even in a retail game. You bought that on a game that's still in early access. Although someday you may turn around and be able to eBay that spaceship for 3000 bucks. Who knows? I know we've talked about this before, but man, I MMORPGs... The game EverQuest, back when it was the 800-pound gorilla of, of MMOs, had the 17th largest economy in the world. And I mean real-world economy. Um, people were farming rare drops in EverQuest and then selling stuff on eBay for real money. Back before the developers realized they had to make that against the end user license agreement and there were only 16 countries in the world that had a larger economy than norath um there was so much money being generated from everquest sales What else can we sell? The struggle to maintain available pack space is ongoing. I do have some fish I could put in my housing chest. Can sure sell that. All right, that's probably good enough for now. I don't like to spend too much stream time staring at the vendor panel, but it's got to be done. Greetings, friend of the Rohirrims. Greetings, friend of the Rohirrims. Baca says, I've offered numerous times to clean out your inventories for you, Ed. That's okay. You've got enough trouble just maintaining Donnie's Steam library for him. You and Larianna. Larianna always wants to clean out my bags, too. Travel to Aldberg? I can do that. Oh, I've seen a few Bacchus. I thought it might be funny to actually stream one privately in Discord. Besides as raucous as uh, South Park the Stick of Truth was. These are desperate times for the Rohirrim. We ride for Aldberg. And I can grab another Coke Zero. Or earn him a beating when his mom catches him. Chair stream hype.
That, my friends, is the beauty of being free to play. Stable Master's horse rides are basically like built-in bathroom breaks. It's able to grab a Coke Zero and uh, take a quick bio, and I'm still riding to Aldberg. It's perfect. Yeah, we got to keep it classy, Bacchus. And that's why I played and streamed South Park The Stick of Truth, because that was a classy, classy game. Okay, maybe not, but I, I laughed uproariously through that whole thing. That game was so funny. It was hysterically good. In fact, I think there's a new South Park game that just came out. Am I imagining that? Can somebody throw the title into chat for me? Ponton says, I'm off. Have fun storming the castle. Ponton, you have yourself a great weekend. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you again soon, bud. Steak and potatoes and okra for dinner. Okra is one of those things that everybody either seems to love it or hate it, but I like okra. I think it's really good. This is when it starts to feel tedious because I'm like, didn't I just vendor a bunch of stuff? Okay. That should have let me turn in this quest. South Park Snow Day. Yeah, that should be pretty cool. So many things that need to be done. Completed all roads lead back. And I completed Kindred to the Aer Lingus. Very nice. You have my thanks for all that you have done. Give my regards to Eowyn and tell her that I am doing what I can to maintain her brother's home. Okay. So now I can leave Aldberg and head back to Eowyn and they can start moving to Underharrow. Very nice. Thank you Antler and Bacchus for mentioning South Park Snow Day. There we go. Got a little stuck coming out of the doorway there. So there is a lot to like in Aldberg. Uh, there is a full crafting hall uh, with um, Guild Masters and an auction house and yeah everything's here. It's a groovy place to hang out. And now that I'm kindred with the Aer Lingus I can buy the uh, travel skill to come back here too. Your 
aid is welcome, friend. Look at all that glorious pack space, it's beautiful. So I've eaten on camera, I've fished, I'm crafting, we've definitely done task item turn-ins, and I've managed my inventory quite a bit. It has been a complete Lotro stream. Those are the five tidbits of quality Lotro streaming right there, boys and girls. And I am excited that you got to witness it in all of its glory. Geekster says, I just saw a post about being in a Blockbuster on a Friday was a place to run into friends. Second Blockbuster post I've seen today. Yeah, I used to run into to folks at the video store. That was a thing. Everybody would be trying to load up on movies for the weekend. I was thinking it might be fun to go to the theater. Um, the Planet of the Apes movie might be mildly interesting if that's still out. But uh, I was kind of interested in that Furiosa uh, Mad Max saga anybody's seen that I just love a quick and dirty rating a B C D F great good meh whatever you guys are thinking who saw it used to be a cushy job too back in the day working at a video store I had a buddy who worked at a local video store and he was like the assistant manager and he kept taking movies home and not bringing them back. He had a whole closet full of videos, um, VHS cassettes in fact, and I don't remember if they closed his store or they just fired him and it got to the point where they actually sent the cops to his house uh, to get the movies back. It's like, dude, they're VHS rental tapes. Why do you want to hang on to them? Wasn't a career, mind you. Wouldn't pay the bills nowadays. But as a teenager, it was one of those jobs folks wanted. 
Um, my best friend's then girlfriend, now wife, in high school and college, she worked at the movie theater and would get him into movies for free. That was a pretty cool gig. Baca says, I haven't seen it, but didn't hear much good about it, unfortunately. But you do need to consider how much value you ascribe to the opinion of assorted YouTubers. And I, you know, sometimes you go to a movie with very low expectations and, and end up enjoying it, which is okay. I mean, I'm, I'm literally just it's like, what can we do to get out of the house that doesn't involve me dropping $80 on Japanese food on a Monday night? Yeah, that's another one of those gigs. That was back when a lot of movie theaters were in the mall as well, like in Fast Times. Yep. We still have uh, a 14-plex at the mall that's three blocks from where I live. Uh, the scene of the biggest mass shooting in Nebraska history. Uh, the Von Mar department store. Some 19 or 20 year old depressed emo kid went in there and just shot up the place. I ended up killing himself as well. I don't know if he killed himself or if the police took him out. But uh, our neighbor lady who lived right upstairs from us actually worked at the store and she was there when it happened. So horrible scene for anybody who was there. I will not bore you guys with my uh, guild crafting that I've been working on. But I am working my way up the guild ladder slowly but surely. It's a happy thing. It's funny how bare bones the movie theater is nowadays, too. This 14-plex at the Westroads Mall. Um, probably it's different on weekends if they have a big opening. But I'll typically go to the movies on like a Tuesday or Wednesday night. Um, you know, it's just something to do. Get out of the house. Go when it's not busy. And... I do not know if we will survive this onslaught. We ride for Edoras and for glory. Um, but they don't even have anybody at the ticket booth. You just walk in, the doors are open, and you go up to the counter, the snack counter, and you pay for your ticket and then get your snacks. And you just kind of go wandering in, and nobody's really paying much attention, and it's, it's pretty funny. It's like they have them staffed so bare bones that, I mean, it's one of those deals where if you wanted to, you could probably go to a 11 a.m. feature and just stay all day and night if you wanted to go watch four or five movies. Fortunately for them, there aren't four or five good movies out at any one time anymore. We're still suffering from the writer's strike and some things like that, so hopefully it'll pick back up, but... Geekstore says, I can't think of a mall near here that still has theaters. It's all big, multi-screen, massive complexes. A couple of the old downtown one or two screen theaters still exist here. Yeah, we, we lost those. Uh, we also lost the big standalone multiplexes. There was a standalone uh, multiplex at the Oakview Mall here in town. that was really big and really popular, and it's gone. It's just sitting there vacant now. Um... And we used to have some nice theaters. We also had some second-run movie theaters, and those are gone, which I liked going to those. 
where it was, you know, two or three bucks for a ticket. And hopefully you bought concessions, but it was stuff that had just dropped out of the first run theaters, but they'd, they'd pick up the movies and, and run them for a while longer. Those were always nice to go to. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things where if you're going to drop 60 bucks on two tickets, two popcorns, and two sodas, that can be a pricey night out. But if you're just going to go, you know, drop six bucks on two tickets and split a large Coke Zero, that's the ultimate date. I'll just ride to Edris. I don't need to stop for Scarn. I want to stop for Scarn. I had a hard time stopping myself from hitting the dismount button. Cowinator checking in. Hi, Cowinator. What server? Gladden? Yep, I am on Gladden. We're talking about beer and movie theaters. We also had a movie theater here that served beer and served dinner, and I think they're out of business now. That one that was in Midtown Crossing by the Mutual of Omaha headquarters. The one big complex near me is fairly similar. Most of the place is automated. Food section is all self-service. There's a person who basically scans what you picked up and tells you what you owe. Ushers are non-existent. Cleaning crews are the most numerous, yeah. Oh, the new Alien movie. I want to see that, too. I don't think that's out yet. I think that's out in, like, August or something. I'm a sucker for Alien and Resident Evil movies. I think I've seen them all. I even liked Prometheus, which everybody just routinely panned and hated. I thought it was good. Now, the next two movies that came after Prometheus, I watched one, and then I watched the next one, and I'm like, isn't this the same movie that was the last one? It's like, I couldn't differentiate between them story-wise, and I don't remember the titles. I think one of them was Alien Covenant. But it was exactly like the other new one that wasn't uh, Prometheus. I like the Prometheus storyline. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, and they have free refills on the popcorn and on the soda now. And I have to be careful because if I get a large Coke Zero with free refills, I may end up spending more time in the bathroom than in the my theater seat. I have to pace myself if I'm at the movies. I think I saw a lot of the Resident Evils in the theater. But they're a good watch at home, too. Action-packed, don't have to think too much. A little bit of eye candy. Geekster says, I haven't watched much of the new Alien movies. I started re-watching all the original Planet of the Apes. Wanted to watch the newest one eventually and thought I should catch up. Corbin Kid says Prometheus. Was that the AI and robot movie in the house with Julie? Antler's heading off to bed. Antler, you have a good night. We'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Hopefully you'll be around for shooty boats. Speak with me when you are ready. Let us remain alert. Allies of Wormtongue could be anywhere. We have returned to Adoras and should see how Eowyn fares with her duties.
Nona. Somebody was asking me about my favorite uh, storylines in the game, and I mentioned uh, Narmalith, and I mentioned um, one of the other storylines, and I completely forgot about Nona. In fact, I love this dialogue here. Why should we tell you anything? We've done nothing to cause you insult. What would your father say to this discourtesy? How should we know? They're all gone. Because of Dunlendings like her. Nona's response is great. Make sure Nona does not hurt anyone. You need to learn something, weak-legged fool foals. Get out of here, Dunlending witch. You know nothing of my land. We know enough. Your people want to kill us all. How many Dunlendings have you slain, small one? What? How about you? How many Dunlendings have you killed? None, but I'm not yet of age. I've slain more than two dozen Dunlendings. They were allies of those who killed my brother, servants of Saruman. Have you nothing now to say? Can you teach us how to fight? Please teach us sword play. As soon as Nona brags about her Dunlending kill count, all of a sudden the kids are like, Oh, you're awesome. Teach us. That's pretty funny. Well played, Nona. But I think... Yeah, and they all surround her. I think Nona's one of the, the truly great inventions from the development team. She's just such an interesting, well-rounded character. Oseo oh, says, that likely was me asking you what Epic Volume was. Okay, that could be. I remember that conversation. Let's look up the murder hobo as a role model. Yeah. Bacchus tells me if I ever actually get to Umbar, there will be more of Nona's story to learn. I look forward to that. Northeast of the Metaceld Steps. Okay. Well, I'm heading south, so that's the wrong direction. You can't jump down off of there, so I gotta go around. It's quite a long ways into Umbar, though, pretty much the end of the story content that launched with the expansion. Okay. Where is this person I need to talk to northeast of the Metaceld Steps? I guess east is this way. Pay attention, Ed.
course there's not a quest ring. Why would there be? Should be where Grimma's crib was. Oh, okay. I walked right past there. I didn't see him. Thank you, Zinger. Singer used to take pity on my old blind ass and lead me around a bit. There we go. Oh, talk to Eowyn. Okay. I was like, is this going somewhere eventually? No, not really. Find Elfberg. North of her home. She too has seen a suspicious figure. Okay. Let's see where she might be. Hello, Elfberg. I was going to say, you better not be traveling me away from Edoras. I've got to talk to her again. A picture begins to form. Our mysterious foe seems to have fled Edoras to the north. Travel to the entrance of Stoke. We've been to Stoke. Inquiring Mind says there's a picture of you holding one of your airplanes on Discord. I would like permission to use the likeness of the plane in the picture. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that particular plane is uh, from a company called Horizon Hobbies, uh, horizonhobbies.com. You can probably go to their website and pull up much better pictures of the aircraft. But if you want to make sure that you have permission to use the photo, you can certainly use my photo. If you'd rather not pull something off of a commercial website,
Provide Eowyn and her people to journey to Dunharrow. Eowyn can be found outside of Metaseld. Oh, apparently I'm not past 12 chapter 5. Volume 3, Book 7. No, it says I'm on Chapter 6. Travel to the entrance of Stoke. Well, if I'm through 12.5, Eyes of Edoras, oh, and Book 12, Chapter 6, Through the Net. Okay, so I do need to go to Stoke and complete that quest. Very good. Reading is fundamental. Yeah, then I would have to get their permission. Okay, um, if I get the chance this weekend, Sunday I would like to take that plane out and fly it. I'll see if I can get you a better picture of it. I think, I don't remember if it was my wife or my buddy Cole who took that picture. And neither one of them, well, my, I'd say my wife's not a great photographer. It's not fair to her. She used to be a great photographer. But using using a cell phone and... Uh, no, we're going to... Stoke. There we go. No need, thank you. Already done. See Whisper, it's a surprise. Okay. I'll check it out. 1T Scott says, gonna go stoke the fire? I am. Singer used to get pictures of some of us streamers and then make hilarious memes out of them. It's always fun to see who Zinger was lampooning next, unless it was me. There was Santa Ed, Big Eyed Ed, um, Stalker Ed. Not sure how I got a reputation for stalking Maiden of Rohan, other than promoting her enthusiastically when she first started streaming. Oh, Tina's heading out. You keep being the man, Ed. Was I ever the man? It's just confusing because I'm pretty sure that my wife thinks I am not the man. I keep telling her that her next husband is going to be way better than I am and to let me know when she finds him so I can get her stuff back for her.
Yeah, I've noticed that, uh, you know, um, I think Andrew Allstars went through it. Um, cool Kyle. I think once you leave Twitch, you can say you're coming back, but are you? It's tough to get back into the swing of things after you, you walk away. Maiden's problem is um, she suffered from back trouble, and it was hard for her to sit in her chair for extended periods of time. Um, and I just I, I liked when she started streaming because I thought she was very personable. She interacted with chat well. And I thought she'd be a great asset for, for Lotro, and she was. Um, it was fun to hang out with. But, yeah, I mean, when she physically couldn't sit in her chair and stream for more than... 90 or 120 minutes without suffering back pain. Uh, that, that's it'd be pretty tough for her to stream full time. Um, and I think they had other priorities, so I, that's okay. Streaming's fun, and if you can do it and it works out for you, great. And if you can't, well, it's you know. Bring the blood eye back. We're going to the meat hall. Yeah, Baca says, I found it very hard to work up the motivation and the oomph to start streaming again. Cool Kyle forgot about him, Geeks Tour says. He's probably the most popular Lotro streamer since I've been on Twitch. Everybody was so excited every time Cool Kyle would make another big comeback. Um, you know, he was funny and fun to hang out with, and he was the one who started the whole uh, Bjorning uh kinship and I know a lot of the friends I play with today uh, used to, the peace and do no harm to my people or their lands. run with cool and Kyle's the group there is work to be done here Baca says, every time I plan to stream, I'm either just flat out of energy or something small comes up that serves as a convenient excuse. Hopefully I'll be back on Twitch again in a week or two. Well, we don't want Poteen to develop a stutter, so you got to do what you got to do. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, my whole approach to it is I'm going to be playing video games anyway, so I just have fun going live and talking to y'all and doing my thing and I what's funny about it is I know there's got to be a pretty big segment of the Lotro community that doesn't like me for one reason or another um, I'm not particularly slavish towards the lore I like token I enjoyed reading Tolkien um, I like the movies but a lot of what I read these days when I read it's more Frederick Forsyth and John Le Carre than it is uh, Tolkien. Um, and I was just as excited about Dune as I am about uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, there are other science fiction and fantasy franchises that I enjoy very much. Tolkien certainly near the top of that list, but he's not, not something that I live and breathe every day. 
Um, also, I, I have one of those personalities that uh, a lot of people enjoy hanging out with me. A lot of people think I'm a jerk, and that's okay. Sometimes I am a jerk. Um, but what you guys get when you hang out with me is yeah, just me, warts and all. I mean, there are some streamers who when they come on live, I it's a little bit like they're... I don't want to say that they're phony, but they're they're putting on a version of themselves that they think viewers want to see. And I, I've had a couple of friends who stream, and it'd be like if there's five or six of us in chat, they act a certain way. But if there's 12 or 15 people in chat, all of a sudden a switch flips, and they go into game show host mode. You know what I mean? And it's like, eh, okay. I mean, if that's how you want to want to play it, hopefully that works out for you. I always thought that was one of the reasons why Cool Kyle burned out. You say you look for someone. I've seen scores come through this gate today. Uh, I mean, you guys get me warts and all. I don't put on a whole lot of pretense. I come on here, I blather like an idiot about whatever I feel like talking about. Um, you know, I mean, I'll doze off while we're trying to finish quests occasionally. Uh, you know, you guys have seen me nodding off in my chair. You guys have seen me behave badly. Um, I, and it, it, that's just me, you know. So I'm able to sustain what I do because I don't put any extra energy in it just for the sake of uh, streaming. And I don't do anything I wouldn't do if y'all weren't here. But for the folks who don't like Big Ed Mustafa, don't like watching my streams, think I'm a jerk, you're not wrong. Appreciate you giving me a try. But, uh, you know, there's plenty of other great Lotro streamers. I shout them out on a regular basis. Enjoy the game, hang out with them, and uh, you don't have to watch my channel. I'll keep on being me. The Dune movies were good. The Dune books were fantastic. I enjoyed them quite a bit. Uh, also a big fan of uh, Asimov's Foundation Trilogy. I haven't seen the Apple series. I heard it was pretty slow going. But uh, very much enjoyed those books. There was a, a British uh, fantasy author, Michael Moorcock. And uh, the Elric series was fantastic reading. Still enjoy those books. Have no idea why they've faded from popularity. It's like, how can you not like Elric of Melna Bonet? The Demon Sword Stormbringer. It was fantastic reading. Okay, I'm missing something to advance the quest. Inquiring Minds thinks I'm okay. I appreciate that. I watch for the Mrs. M run-ins. I'm waiting for her to fulfill her quest. <laughs> Someday. Someday. 
Geekster says a few of the streamers I followed over the years have packed it in. Some found it too hard to do, stressful, etc., and some just moved on. Uh, the Dune movies were good. I can barely read past 140 characters. A jerk? He hates these cans. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we turned the nodding off into a drinking game. <laughs> hey, hey, every time Ed snores, you have to drink a shot. You guys would have some serious liver damage. To my credit, I've never full out fallen asleep at the keyboard, but man, it's been close some nights. We'll be stay up too late, and it'll be like, oh, we just need to finish this quest, and I'll be like, my horse will go steering off into a wall. I'm like, huh, what? What just happened? I don't even cover it very well. But, you know, sometimes you game until you can't stay in the chair. That's just part of gaming. I know I've said on more than one occasion that uh, my I will finally probably die one day uh, playing Fallout 5 or 6 until I just die of exhaustion in my chair. Those games have been very hard on my constitution over the years. Uh, I think, man, Fallout 4, I just, I remember staying up till 3, 4, 5 in the morning. I'd take like a two or three hour nap, roll into the office, barely conscious, and sometimes just curl up and snooze at my desk and then come home and couldn't wait to start it all over again. It's like, what? It's time to go home. I can go play Fallout. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely poured a lot of time into those games. You say this child sold a man for whom you seek. And he has joined the orcs? Ooh, that's a much better helmet than what I'm wearing. The orcs have launched attacks on Stoke before now, but we must not remain idle. Defeat orcs and half orc raiders from that one place. Okay, we can do that. Ooh, new quest, 12-7. I should be able to go trip AON and get that moving. Pyro says, please do a mukbang gaming stream. Get some pizza or a sandwich or live barbecue, please. Let's feast so you can focus better in Lotro. I eat on camera almost every stream. Tonight it was uh, extra cheesy Cheez-Its. That's an example of some of the things I do that oh, some viewers just hate it. The idea of a streamer eating and drinking while they're streaming. There's a lot of people who won't watch me just for that reason. And it's like, if I'm gaming, I'm snacking and drinking soda. And the fact that I'm, I'm gaming while I'm streaming isn't going to change that behavior. Not the least of which reason is because, you know, when I'm gaming, I'll spend hours and hours in front of the computer. And I'm not going to go hours and hours without food and water or food and soda. Who am I talking to where? I just came from the Mead Hall. Why am I supposed to go back and talk to her again? I was literally just standing in front of her. I think Forbin Kid wants to see me level tonight. While others tune in in anticipation of when a new soda releases for anticipated review. <laughs> yeah, I should be glad that that, uh, that candy store keeps me supplied with weird sodas. Uh, yeah, that Barks uh, Zero Sugar 
was really good and I looked and it's not in general distribution yet. Some people had it on Walmart.com, but it was at ridiculously inflated prices. Talk to so and so in the mead hall. Hello, so and so. What business have you with the row you're in? Gain entrance to the mead hall of Osley. Okay. We ride for Osley and for glory. I mean, if I really wanted to go partner, I think I'd make a pretty good booby streamer. My problem is I'd have to do a lot of shaving, and I just don't think I'd want to keep up with that much chest shaving. But I've got some great cleavage if I wanted to show it off. Why my OnlyFans page is so successful. We're gonna kill this goblin. Come here, you. Have you tried the Zero Sugar A and W, but said icky? Normally the uh, A&W root beer and the A&W um, cream soda are both pretty good. I guess it just depends on what you're used to drinking. That's a, that, that bark zero sugar just tastes like root beer. You can't hardly tell it's diet at all. It was really good. Inflatable pool filled with Coke Zero. I can see it now. If you ever want to earn some extra cash, Zinger, you and I can Coke Zero wrestle in a waiting pool on my OnlyFans page. I think it would be hot and fans would tune in. Love the Zero Dr. Pepper, and I blame you. Yeah, that stuff's really good. Yeah, I decided that uh, Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar has replaced Diet Mountain Dew as my second favorite soda. It's very, very drinkable. Well, I suppose I figured I tripped some stupid quest to kill a bunch of orcs. I did. And he didn't even count because I'm too far away. Okay, well, let's get to the Mead Hall of Osley. It's this way. I'm not a soda pop drinker. Went two years with no soda pop, but now I've had like five in the last month. Well, it's cold and refreshing. It has life-giving caffeine, and it's zero sugar, zero calories. You're not really hurting yourself much. Aristotle thought so too, Zinger. Zinger says most things are fine in moderation.
I've discovered Osserly. Hello, friend. There you go. Just for you, Forbin kid. Pilfered goods. Alright, well this puts me at a good stopping point. Um, I have to be up in four and a half hours to drive Mrs. M to dialysis. So I'm going to call it a night, but you don't have to go home. You just can't stay here. Let's see who else is playing and streaming Lotro right now. And we'll find a better streamer than me to go raid and say hello to. Uh, French Girl Gaming is up and running. Uh, we'll probably raid her because she's a fellow Lotro streamer. Uh, on stream team member, I should say, here on Lotro stream. Our friend Busy Beth, uh, who does stream Lotro, is playing Destiny 2 tonight. I understand they just came out with a new expansion that's supposed to be pretty good. Um, what else we got? Francelin 1995 is streaming Lotro. Uh, our friend the Grey Ferret is streaming World of Warships. Uh, if you want to check out the new Star Trek event that uh, Tower's so disappointed in. Uh, yeah, let's go raid French Girl Gaming. She should just be getting fired up and... Uh, you guys can get settled in of uh, uh, a delightful evening of wondering why her Australian accent is so weird. Uh, she's actually French but lives in Australia now, so literally nobody can understand her when she speaks English. It's awesome. Uh, raid French. A girl. No space ed. Gaming. Have a great weekend, everybody. I will be on my channel. Did that pop? Invalid username. No, I'm an idiot and I typed it wrong. One of the th I have problems with my stupid headphone cord draping right across my keyboard. So let's try that again. Raid French Girl Gaming. There we go. Raid has been created. Anyway. Don't come by my channel tomorrow night. I'll be playing and streaming Apex Legends. I'll be behaving badly. Uh, it's not anything you should watch. And then um, Sunday night we'll be playing World of Warships. Uh, I play with a bunch of Lotro players, so that's always a good time. Get out, touch some grass this weekend. I know it's going to be really nice here on Sunday. Hopefully I'll get a chance to go to the flying field. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys all again soon. Thanks for hanging out.